Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Lily. So I have an interesting one for you today. I had no idea Marilyn Manson made a short film called Groupie back between 1996 and 1998. You can Google it, but there's no footage of this short film anywhere. Supposedly only three people have ever seen it. Andy Dick is one of those people. We're going to read a little bit about this short film. Uh, Manson was going to release it and he even teased it a couple years ago, but didn't. Now, everything that I have researched says that Marilyn Manson's manager, Tony, warned him, do not release this film. And here's one of the reasons. Tony begging him to prevent the public from distri distributing or viewing Groupie cited fears that it would be considered sufficient evidence to convict Manson of a criminal case if it was ever brought up against him. Dick also acknowledged that the participants were enjoying the session at the time of the filming, but gruesome subject matter. However, Dick did not deny being disturbed by the film. Andy Dick was disturbed by this film. Okay, so we're going to go back for a minute. Now, this is what they say goes on in, in the film. It's like a little, like a, a rough draft, basically. Now, trigger warning. Um, this is going to be talking about... Um, Violence, domestic abuse, sex, drugs, rock and roll. So go ahead and go if it disturbs you. So the film begins with a shot of Manson giving his bandmate, George, Jordy Twiggy, we'll just call him Twiggy, fellatio through a condom <clears throat> at Marilyn Manson's house party. Now, this movie groupie was filmed during a house party, an actual house party. I should have stated that sooner, but just realized it. Okay. So the film begins with a shot of Manson giving his bandmate Twiggy fellatio through a condom at Marilyn Manson's house party. Shortly after that, the groupie arrives at the door, brandishing a piece of artwork as a gift and is invited inside. It is here where things escalate in an extremely disturbing manner. Marilyn pressures the groupie into drinking his bandmate Stephen Madonna Wayne Gacy's urine from a wine glass, to which she eventually does but only after convincing Manson to participate as well. The remainder of the short's con contents has not been made entirely clear, but it has been revealed that the groupie is at one point tied up with a gun, with, with a gun is introduced into the situation by Manson. A fight breaks out and blood is shed. Now this is on fandom. So, and it says, only three people are confirmed to have seen the short. Manson himself, Andy Dick, comedian friend of Manson's, and Manson's manager, Tony Celia, Celia, the former two of whom discussed the short on a 2002 episode of Dinner of Five, Dinner Four Five. After viewing the film, Tony implored Manson to hide the masters, believing that if it were to be released, Manson would likely go to jail and or end his career because people would believe that Manson actually committed sexual abuse in the short. Okay, now that's not all. So, in the midst of finding this out about Manson's short film called Groupie, we also have two of Manson's ex fiance and girlfriends, Evan, Rachel Woods, and Esme, who have released videos on their Instagram of them telling their story about abuse that they endured. Now, they do not name an abuser. They do not name Marilyn Manson as an abuser either. So we can't say that it was Marilyn Manson. We can't say who it was because they did not name who it was. But here are the two clips. Now, here's the one of Evan Rachel Woods speaking. When I was a teenager, I met a man. I looked up to him in many ways and felt like we had a special bond and I had no intention of it turning into something romantic. When it eventually did, I was interested in family one by one by some family one by one by, one by, one by exhibiting rage in some form or another when I was in contact with them. The only way I knew what to call him was to give him what he wanted, which was me all to himself in total isolation. He had bouts of extreme jealousy, which would often result in him wrecking our home, cornering me in a room and threatening me. I witnessed my abuser threatening, threatening people with force or legal action if he worried they would expose him. He bragged. Now, I'm not going to play all of that because I have another video where I play all of that. Um, Kia, uh, Kiera uh, at Flesh Fondue had posted this on Twitter. Um, they shared the clips. Now, this is Esme, another of exes, Manson's exes. Manipulating and gaslighting me over a number of years of friendship. 
He knew that I was easy prey. I had neither power nor control over my life. A previous intimate relationship had stripped me of both, and so I was led from the frying pan into the fire. He had, he had a dress code I was expected to abide by. He controlled what I ate, decided if my friendships were acceptable, and when I called my family, I did, I did so hiding inside a closet. I was not allowed to keep the house, and I would often be locked in the bedroom. He controlled when and if I slept, and I was often violently shaken awake should I go to sleep without permission. Verbal abuse, abuse and name calling was a daily occurrence, but the physical violence was most often disguised in acts of intimacy and was not consented to. In one instance, I was bitten until my body was covered in bruises, on another occasion, cut with a knife during sex. He took photos of my naked, mutilated body and posted them online without my knowledge. I still have these photos along with photos of my body covered in welts and inflicted with a whip. On one occasion, after four days of no sleep, he became very angry with me. He started smashing holes in the walls with an axe, and as I tried to calm him down, he began to chase after me with a weapon. Now, similarities between these two's allegations are so similar. I mean, it is like <clears throat> they are saying the exact same thing. So a lot of people believe. Now, this is alleged. A lot of people are alleging that both women are talking about Marilyn Manson because they both dated him, and the ages that they give is the same age when they dated him but they did not name marilyn manson and both women the abuse claims are the same isolation physical abuse threats um the starvation the uh biting the sexual abuse tearing the house apart um picking and choosing friends being very jealous all of their abuse claims are the same it's like they're talking about the same person. So that's why a lot of people are thinking that they're talking about him. Now, uh, let's see, there it is. Esme shares one of the photos on her Instagram of where she was whipped. That's the photo. I'm going to tell you right now, whoever hit her, hit her hard. That was not, that was not no easy hit. You can see the the marks you can, not just the marks themselves you can see the details if you see where my mouse click is right there my pointer you can see each individual <clears throat> whelp within the strike does that make sense what i'm saying here there's a long strike okay now if you look closer there's each individual little whelps within the strike now look at this one little whelps in the within the strike same way with that one and that one over there someone hit her hard and more than once and it's so sad because you can't force a victim to give a name but it's so scary to know this person's still out here and could still be doing this to people but they the victims need to be comfortable and they have to be safe and if they do give a name the abuser's name that person's say fan base could come after these women you know like we talked about before bill cosby harvey weinstein you know the fan bases attack the victims online they make death threats they go to their house they stalk them they make it unbearable for the victim so you can't blame these women for not giving a name they're terrified and besides the abuser making threats um now she shares photos and this one this is the photo where I'm fixing to read the post that she put with it. She is so gorgeous. But remember this photo as I read when I'm fixing to read, okay? Now she says, and this was part one of two. This is my back. The injuries you see are real. The whipping that gave me these wounds was filmed in the name of art. I used to look at this photo with pride because I thought it was a sign of great devotion to my abuser. Now I look at it with horror. Despite the many years that have passed since this happened, my night terrors and PTSD symptoms continue to get worse. I am a domestic violence survivor, and I am not okay. Hashtag, I am not okay. This photo was taken on my birthday many years ago, and that's the one with her. She was smiling. The night before, I had been locked in the bedroom alone and had not slept. I was surviving on very little food and was physically and mentally exhausted. I often wasn't allowed to sleep. In this photo, my boyfriend has given me my birthday present. Despite the plaster smile, I can see the emptiness and fear in my eyes. We went for dinner. 
later and he spent the whole entire evening berating me because he didn't want to go out. I was not okay then and I'm not okay now. Hashtag I'm not okay. And then someone says, I'm so proud of you, Esme. And we are. We are so proud because I'm telling you. Abusers have a way of making you think like just like she, I'm sorry I'm already getting worked up but they have a way of making you think like she said this is art when it's the abuser's way of abusing you violently and getting an erection and getting off to abusing you getting off to your pain getting off on your fear getting off on your isolation getting off on knowing that they control your life and your every move and then when you try to leave they get off on threatening you now luckily both of these women got away from their abuser that picture is just it's hard thanks for watching we'll have more shortly